stay tuned for the next one where we're going to be talking about that nut being a holder and adapter and all kinds of cool stuff. Wait a minute, wait a minute. There's been a change of plans. I've been trying to make the story of this lathe a cohesive story where we do one thing and then we do another. But a lot of times I'm doing a bunch of things all at once. And when I went to go do the next video talking about the nut and everything, I realized it was all getting out of order and it was confusing. I've got a new floor. Look at that beautiful floor. And you could see it in some shots and it wasn't there. And it was just, I said, wait, we got to back up and let's tell the story properly. So this time we're going to go back. We're going to talk about putting the feet on, getting the thing leveled. Uh, we're going to fix the cross slide. We're going to get that scraped in with the gib and everything. We're going to make some way covers. Got a lot of good stuff to cover. Then we're going to get to the nut and all that in a future video. It's going to be worth the wait, I hope. So come along. And did I forget to mention, my name's Kevin Tomberg. Welcome to the channel. I've been restoring a South Bend lathe, 15 inch swing, six foot bed. There it is there, it's beautiful. Come along, I'd like to show you what we're doing this time. Let's make some feet from a lathe. I'm gonna use the hockey puck method. There's uh, several people on YouTube that have described this. The long and the short of it is, is that you drill out an access hole that then goes through there and then you put a washer over top. So that looks easy. Couple things that are different. A lot of people use these lag screws and they talk about wanting um, that square to adhere in the puck. To me, I want it to be able to turn so the rubber foot can stay stationary with the foot and the rod uh, can rotate as we go up and down. So I'm actually going to uh, take the lathe and knock the corners off this so that it's round. Okay, so that now is smooth. I'm only gonna do one of these bolts until I make the whole thing and see if it's gonna work the way I plan on it. I'm gonna make the depth of the hole 400 thousandths. I'm gonna put it about that far below the surface of the puck. I'm gonna use this inch and a quarter Forstner bit, which I picked up at Lowe's. Way more expensive than it should be. Get that out and I'm gonna cut this in the lathe. Okay, I've got my puck secured in my three jaw chuck. When I account for the center point just touching and how deep I want the these round cutting teeth to go in, I'm gonna go 9 sixteenths uh, total depth. All right, I think that's it. All right, now we need a through hole for the bolt to go through. Now I'm gonna vacuum up the rubber. Okay, let's see how this is gonna go together. This is a little tight, but that should be fine. It'll still rotate when we go to level it. So that's there. That's a nice fit. Then I'm gonna put one of these large washers. Ideally, if you could get a washer with a smaller hole, uh, that would be better, but my local hardware store didn't sell them. I didn't wanna to wait to get them from the internet. So I'm gonna put a smaller washer over top of that to distribute the weight from the nut out to this larger washer. Then I'm going to put a nut on. Actually, I'm gonna put two on. The second one is a jam nut. Now, some people, just either welded that to the rod, um, and I think that would work as well, but nuts are cheap, and then I can take it apart if I want. Now, on the top side, where it goes through the machine, I'm gonna have another two nuts, and then this is what will determine the length of the foot, how far up this is. In other words, this is not gonna adjust. This is the part that's gonna adjust to adjust the, the foot height. And then this will come through the top of the foot as long as it needs, and we'll put another nut on the top of that. That's kind of cool, isn't it? Like a necklace. Here's a question for you. Um, I'm done with the lathe, even though I'm not done with the project, so I thought I'd just clean up here a little bit. Do you all clean up all at once at the end? Do you clean up as you go along? I'm always afraid that if I get all the way through the project, I'm gonna then be tired and just wanna throw in the towel and go. So I figure if I can clean a little bit as I go along, it's not so much all at the end. Anyway, what does everyone else do? Well, I had to go and take the, the square head off all four of these, I did that off camera. So let's get these uh, all assembled. And there we go. So this part has a jam nut on it. This whole thing can turn while the foot stays stationary. So that way I can rotate this to make the upper nut go up and down to raise and level without the foot having to scuff on the floor. 
All right, let's lift her up. All right, that's high enough to get the feet under. Be careful that if it drops, I don't lose a finger. All right, that went reasonably well. All right, I got those tightened up. Another advantage of those is gonna be Kind of bring the lathe up better operating height for me. I'm just under 6'4", so it'll be nice to have it a little taller. All right, now to work on getting the heavy end up. As you can see, it's mostly just picking up the tail. So I'm gonna, while I'm here, try to get some bigger blocks underneath here. And maybe I'll be able to get it to teeter-totter to lift up the other end of the Perfect, that's what I wanted, the back end's popping up. Just need a couple of, probably a quarter of an inch to get that floor jack underneath there, then I think I can lift a little bit better. There she's under. All right, let me explain my madness. That floor is wood and it's not very thick. And I don't think it would support all of the weight, even you know, distributed over the, whatever the area, square inches of a three inch diameter puck would be. So I think that, that board will distribute it, at least for now. I ultimately want to get a thin metal plate similar to this one, but not so big. And I'm gonna have to get that from the scrap yard. It needs to be pushed back into that corner and the muse has not yet enlightened me as to how I'm gonna do that. But I think this is a pretty good amount of progress for the day. I'm gonna just tighten up those bolts and uh, leave it at that. I've been trying to decide what I wanna do about those feet. Currently, there's a 9 16th hole through the casting, and I can't buy a 9 16th bolt at my local hardware store. They have half inch of them 5 8 I would ideally like to have that casting hole threaded so that I, I can just thread the leg directly up in there and then not have to have the extra jam nuts. I mean, you see there, I've got four jam nuts, two for the bottom, two for the top, and that's just a lot and it also limits my, um, it, it's taking up space, it limits my, my travel. So I've been trying to figure out what I can do for threading. I have the engineer's little black book. They talk about the threading percentage. You know, ideally we talk about 75% as being a common overlap and you can, you can calculate you know, given the hole that you have, what your actual percent will be. And the key factor here is this number, 0 0.0299, or up here, they just round it to 0 0.013. Now that's in this book, in the 25th edition of the Machinery Handbook, the factor here is a little bit different. Now, this one expects a decimal to be put in percentage, and this is a, a whole number. So this is gonna be off by a factor of 100, but this is essentially using, um, whereas this would be 13, this is gonna be 10.8. Uh, All right, the reason I do those two numbers, so I calculated out, if I use the 9 16 hole and put a 5 8 11 thread in there, that would give me a 52% overlap based on this formula. But if I use the formula from here, I get a 63% overlap. The, the machinist handbook says 
Tests have shown that any increase in the percentage of full thread over 60% does not significantly increase the strength of the thread. Often 55 to 60% thread is satisfactory. So if I use the one formula, it's not satisfactory. I use the other formula, it is just within the satisfactory range. So I don't know. Then I thought about, well, let's say I move up to three quarter inch. If I do three quarter inch, I do have a three quarter inch tap, but my drills, I'm limited to five eighths, elevenths, and eleven sixteenths. If I use a five eighths inch hole, I get a 96% overlap, which probably means that my hole is gonna be really tight and it's gonna be very difficult to tap it and increase my risk of breaking a tap. Or if I use the 11 sixteenths, I'm down to only a 48% uh, overlap. So I'm kind of stuck. None of these are ideal solutions. I may just um, leave it the way it is for right now. I'm gonna be getting in a hardwood floor in here. I'm gonna get uh, hardwood tongue and groove uh, to increase the strength. And then I'm gonna take out those boards. And probably as part of all of that, I'm going to take out, and instead of having two jam nuts on the bottom, I'm just gonna have one nut and weld it to the bolt. And then instead of having two jam nuts on the upper, upper end of the screw, I'm just going to have one underneath and then the one on the top and the two of those will jam it. That's presuming that I just keep it as a loose hole without it being a threaded hole. So that's what I'm thinking about. I've gotten the new flooring in and it looks very fancy like you might see inside a house. Like why would I do that in a shop? Initially, the plan was to get unfinished hardwood in here, but this was uh, cabin grade and it has some defects in it and it turned out to be just about the same price. Uh, the builder who put it in said that if he got the unfinished, he could only get short pieces and then this one, which he was able to get at a good price, had long pieces, so that's why we went with the, with the finish. And it actually leaves the floor smooth, so it sweeps a lot better. It's gonna get scuffs and marks and I can already find places where uh, there's little defects. I don't know if that'll show or not. There's some gouges for when I was moving my lathe, but I'm very happy with it. Looks good, doesn't it? Some of my other machines had metal feet that I was worried was going to scratch the floor, so I took some extra hockey pucks, made some extra feet, and put them on there as well. I've been thinking about names for my machines. I've got the one that I've restored. I bought that at the same time, which I have not touched at all. I really hope I don't have to do much restoration on it. And I've been thinking about some names. Bonnie, Clyde, Beauty and the Beast, Cleopatra and Mark Anthony, Thelma and Louise. I don't know, what do you all think? This is out at Pink Creek Campground. Beautiful day today. The time has come to level this. I'm gonna start by getting it leveled from tailstock to headstock. That doesn't really matter as long as it's kind of roughly uh, level. So I'm gonna work on that first. I'm gonna use just a cheapy level. I don't have uh, much room to go up on that side because of the length of my bolt, unless I'm gonna have to take the whole thing out there and get a longer bolt. So the only option I had to do was to lower that side. And I had initially planned two nuts on the bottom, two nuts on the top as jam nuts, so it wouldn't uh, shift with vibration. I've got that down so that it's all the way down on top of the two and two is four, four nuts. Um, so I can't really go down any farther, but luckily that is, close enough to level for me. Uh, again, the, the headstock to the tailstock is only really important for uh, flow of oil, and that should be close enough for that. All right, now we're gonna look about the torque. I'm using this uh, Sterrett Machinist level someone loaned to me, and I took it on this plate and rotated it until it was in the middle, then I swapped it back and forth and adjusted it just a tiny bit to make sure that it was level and equal on both sides. So confident that that is good and level. So now let's go and set it up on the ways and see what we've got.
without any adjustment, this is where we're starting at the headstock end. And this is the tailstock end. So both of these would say that the front side needs to come up a little bit. So I'm gonna start with uh, that corner there. Well, I thought I'd turned it on time-lapse, but apparently I forgot to. Uh, it really only took about five minutes of adjusting. So let me show you what I got now. Here it is on the headstock side, and here it is on the tailstock side. So that looks pretty even, like a little bit nice. No, I mean, I can imagine it over a little bit farther on the right than on the left, but I think it's actually quite balanced. Leveling complete. This machinist level is made by Sterrett. It says Sterrett there. I can't find a machine number on it. Um, looking up online, I think that this has a five thousandths sensitivity per one foot. That's an 18 inch level. Another thought I had was, is the top of this consistent? And I moved it at various places back and forth. You know, if there was a burr, because certainly that's not like it came out of the factory, but when I moved it back and forth, it did not seem to measure affect the reading. So I think that that is still accurate. Two hours later. All right, after adjusting it, so it's just slightly more on the left than on the right. I want to wait another couple hours because I measured it before and it was right on and then I came back a couple hours and it was off by a line. So I don't know whether that's the building changing with temperature because it's been some time or whether it's just settling in. So um, I think I could get a little bit better. I could get rid of that half bubble there, but I want to wait and see if it stays that way. Here's the tailstock. It's oriented the same way, so it's like a half bubble to the right. Again, I think I'll come and check this again tomorrow. I initially thought that having that base up on two feet looked silly. I thought it was gonna punch through the floor, but I've now got this three quarter inch hickory hardwood, and I'm pretty confident that that's strong enough for the hobbyist level machining I'm gonna do, that's gonna work okay. wooden bridge vibrates a little bit. I want to show what I'm dealing with on this cross slide. So here is the gib. That's the part that moves in and out and then presses against that dovetail. And when I get it adjusted in the middle, it slides very nicely in this range. But out here it sticks and out there it sticks. So either that gib is not flat on that surface, which it may well be, and I, that should be easy to check, or the inside surface of this is not flat, which I'm also concerned about. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that gib out and I'm gonna put it on my surface plate and check that for flatness. Well, it appears that at least part of the problem is this, because I'm getting the most contact in the middle and it pivoted in the middle, so I'll need to take that down. taking out all the color. As you can see, I'm getting better coverage. The other thing I wanted to show is on the back side. Uh, this had been glued on, and as I was uh, pinching it in here on this base side, this came off. Someone's been in here before and, and worked on this machine, so I'm guessing that the gib has gotten worn down so it was a little too thin. I have to glue that back on. I've got good coverage, I'll accept here. All right, I put that gib back in without that spacer and clearly there's a lot of slop there without it. So we'll have to use that, I'll have to glue that, that spacer back on the back. I'm gonna call it here. I feel like I've got pretty good coverage. There is a little bit down there, but that's the very far end. I think it's gonna be okay without that. All right, now this, spacer piece, and I don't know what that's made out of. Um, it was flexible, so some sort of fibrous material. I put that on with blue thread locker, and I don't know if that's the right thing to do, but I thought it would be fairly liquid so that it wouldn't make lumps, 
because my alternative was thinking about epoxy, but I thought that would be too thick. And it's thread locker blue, so I thought I could get it off if I needed to. And I don't think that there's gonna be a lot of friction because there's no motion between this side and the gib itself. So I think it doesn't really matter. I think it's gonna be squished in there. It really just needs to be held in place until I can get it uh, set. Okay, I'm gonna try test fitting this gib again. When I first went to put it in, it seemed that the top of the gib was hitting the under surface of the carriage and it wouldn't go in. I then realized that this thing actually can float up a little bit. And I also uh, used my belt sander, which is, has a machined flat under surface and just made sure that this surface was really flat and this surface was really flat. And with all that, it's going in there fine. Now, so what I've done so far is I've worked with that scraping to make that mating surface of that gib flat. Now, whether that will increase my range of travel, I don't know. It's actually not even gonna go back any farther than that. Hey, that did it. I was worried I was gonna have to scrape off these dovetails. It looks like that might have done it. I don't feel any wiggle there. Starting to stick just a little bit at the end and a little bit here. I think that's pretty good. All right, I'm gonna be happy with that. Thumbs up. So I wanna have a way cover for this part here. So I came up with a design and I made it very thin just to make sure it fit. And this is actually my third iteration. And I've got it pretty good. I've got the curvature that matches that pretty well. I then came back and took that design and extended it. I extended it so it's like this. I have some places I'm gonna put felt in there. I've made some little pegs that will hold the felt in place. That will go on there like that, but it doesn't match the curvature there. So I'm gonna come back and see if I can make it curve around, this plastic curve around there a little bit so there's not that gap. Here's the next generation of this. It's got a curvature here. I'm gonna make some felt pieces to go into the end way wiper. And I don't have thick felt, so I got these thin pieces at my local hobby store. And I'm gonna stack them up and make four, put four of them together to make something that's thicker. So I estimated out a piece of paper, used that as a template, and I got some punches. And now I'm gonna punch some holes in them. Pop out my little piece of wood in there. And in it slides over these little pigs. All right, I'm loading up my felts. Having to trim them just a little bit. That one's okay. All right, let's put it on. That's a thing of beauty. It's like it was made for it. I'm gonna put some oil down there. That hole should be bigger if I do it again. I think if I make another one, I think the hole here needed to be like a half millimeter more towards the left. It's bowing back just a little bit here and it's a little bit extra on that side, but it's plastic and it bends, so I don't think it matters. All right, that part's done. All right, guys, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I am loving this new shop floor. It's uh, easier to keep clean. It just uh, gives me a good feeling coming in. I'm really happy of how the lathe is coming. And uh, I appreciate you coming along for the journey. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks so much. Until next time. And if you enjoy it, if you could please give it a thumbs up. I love comments. Try to get back to everyone that leaves a comment. Um, small channel, so it's easy. Um, anyway, thanks so much. Bye-bye. So...